would it be right to say that this concept of trust now and public trust is quite a novel concept in Sri Lanka? For starters, I think people need to be made to know about the public trust of Sri Lanka because a lot of people don't know about it. I think we need to have more facilities, perhaps physical offices, perhaps regional branches. Just having one office in Colombo 7 and expecting people from up north to come down to Colombo or people from down south to come to Colombo to create a, a, a will or a trust, I don't think that's really going to benefit us as a nation. We have to just market it. We just have to make people aware more of what the public trustee is. The public trustee of the country is the most unbiased, independent, non-political and transparent person. Welcome everyone, you're watching Conversations with Alanki and in today's episode, the focus will be on trust law and the concept of public trustee in Sri Lanka. It's a topic that not many in Sri Lanka are very familiar with. Joining me in this conversation today is Sanat Viratna, President's Counsel, having 28 years of experience in the legal field, 15 of which have been as a barrister and solicitor in Australia. He is also the pu former public trustee of Sri Lanka and the first public trustee to be appointed as President's Counsel whilst holding office as the public trustee. Welcome to the conversation. Thank you, Alanki. So, to begin things off with, would you like to tell our audience what exactly a trust is? Well, uh, the concept of trust, uh, without going into legal jargon or in, in lay terms, Alanki, is a trustee is a person who acts uh, in a fiduciary capacity where uh, that person looks after an asset or a property on behalf of a third party. Mm -hmm. So uh, a, a trustee can be appointed uh, in many ways, one of which is as a trustee to, to take care of uh, a charitable trust, or it could be in terms of uh, a person who's gone bankrupt, uh, or, or even in terms of any, any other uh, appointment which is made by the court. That gives rise to the question, why can't rights be given outright? Why does someone have to hold it on behalf of someone? It depends on the circumstances um, uh, at the time, Alanki, because, for example, uh, there are instances where uh, one could appoint somebody as a trustee mm -hmm. uh, to take care of his or her properties or assets uh, and to, for the, for the, 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 the trusteeship to continue in perpetuity. So, uh, yes, uh, there's nothing that prevents one from appointing somebody to have direct ownership, but the whole trustee concept is based uh, where you don't outright give the entire rights, but you manage it for a third party and then you monitor the conduct of the property or the asset. The Department of Public Trustee has served the public since 1930. That's correct. Yet, In Sri Lanka, yes. Yeah, yet there are many who are not familiar with this concept. What really are the functions and obligations of the public trustee? Uh, the obligations and the, uh, the, the duties of the, the Sri Lankan public trustee is all set out in the public trustee's ordinance section 5. Mm -hmm. uh, virtually, again, without going into uh, technical um, legal jargon, if I can use that phrase. In lay terms, Alanki, uh, uh, public trustee can act as a uh, trustee or a custodian trustee or act uh, on behalf of people who are of unsound mind if appointed by the district court or manage funds of people who are not capable of managing their own funds. Uh, and, um, Could and you give an example of how it works? Uh, well, uh, for example, um, if a person um, uh, is uh, uh, before court to appoint uh, a, a trustee, the, the court, first thing the court will look at is, has this person left a last will behind? Or has it got to be a case where court has to appoint an administrator? So if that's the case, court will appoint. The first point of call would be to consider the public trustee. Uh, so in a situation like that, uh, yes, the public trustee is the uh, entity which will take over 
the, uh, the, the management of the, the property or the asset on behalf of the deceased person. How exactly can the public trust serve the people of a country? Well, in, in many ways, um, in other jurisdictions, in other countries or uh, states or territories, I think the scope is larger than what we get here in Sri Lanka at the moment. Uh, for example, certain countries or certain jurisdictions, they have the public trustee acting um, for people to look after their superannuation funds or, or provident funds, as we call it here in Sri Lanka, or their pension funds, or, or to look after uh, uh, elders uh, or retirement villages, uh, things of that sort. Uh, but in relation to Sri Lanka, what we, what we are very familiar here with the concept in Sri Lanka is uh, the public trustee looks after uh, the assets of people who have made uh, private trusts or charitable trusts. Um, and also, uh, in, apart from that, the other head which the public trustee of Sri Lanka wears mainly is when a uh, public trustee has been appointed by the court uh, as a custodian trustee or a trustee or to be, to be um, a person in charge of um, assets of minors or people of unsound mind. So in that sense, the public trustee has a huge role to play uh, in terms of uh, serving the public of a nation. Would it be right to say that this concept of trust law and public trustee is quite a novel concept in Sri Lanka? I think you're right in saying that uh, for the simple reason, Alanki, uh, uh, you can't, uh, this, in, 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 this is the commercial reality, you cannot promote anything without your market or your audience having awareness. So what we unfortunately lack in Sri Lanka at the moment, in my personal view, is, is the level of awareness of what this public trustee does or the mm. public trustee's concept is all about. Uh, uh, that has led to the situation, again, in my view, where although we have a history of nearly 91 years of uh, the public trustee of Sri Lanka being in existence, uh, it is not very well known yet, uh, which is unfortunate uh, because uh, there's so much the public trustee could do in terms of um, serving the people of our country. And how do you think we can develop this concept of public trustee in Sri Lanka? Well, I think uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a few ways. For starters, I think people need to be made to know about the public trustee of Sri Lanka because a lot of people don't know about it. Mm -hmm. um, and public trustee is, uh, is an organization where when you are going past driving in your vehicle down Bullis Road, you see the board or the sign and think, oh, that's public trustee. That's where I'm going to go and deposit my last will or that's where I'm going to create my trust, charitable trust. I don't think that's how it works. Uh, it has to be a case where uh, it has to be taken out to the public, where public are made aware. And once the awareness is created, then comes the next step where people build a trust. So uh, you can't sell something without the market knowing it. So I think that should be the first step in terms of developing the concept in our country. And in terms of your experience in Australia, what changes do you think can be made to promote the concept as well as to enhance the recognition of Sri Lanka through the concept of public trustee? Well, I can give you one little example, Alanki, because for, for example, uh, where I am domiciled at the moment is in Queensland. Uh, if you take the, the geographics, Sri Lanka has a population of just under 22 million. Uh, Queensland, which is just a state in Australia, has a population of nearly 5.2 million, mm -hmm. which is just one fifth almost. But the Queensland Public Trustee is structured in such a uh, beautiful manner, I should say. They have uh, a head office plus about 17 regional officers. Yes, I take the point. I agree with you that Sri Lanka is a geographically smaller country, but the population is, is, is more um, de uh, dense, whereas in Australia, countries like Australia, because of the, the bigger landscape, people are more scattered. But uh, coming back to the point I was trying to make, I think we need to have more uh, facilities, perhaps physical offices, uh, perhaps regional branches. Uh, just having one office in Colombo 7 and expecting people from up north to come down to Colombo or people from down south to come to Colombo to create a, 
uh, a will or a trust. Uh, I don't think that's, that's, uh, that's really going to benefit us as a nation. So in terms of developing the concept and taking it more to the public, we need to go out there and serve the public. We need to perhaps at least uh, maybe for starters look at doing things like a mobile service um, uh, periodically. So those are, that's one, one idea which I was trying to promote at the time when I was holding office during my tenure. You did say that it was important to raise awareness about, about this concept. How do you think you could raise awareness and get people to understand why they need to create a trust? Well, uh, how do we do it? Uh, we have to just market it. We just have to make people aware more of what the public trustee is. Now, I've had experiences that during my tenure where people used to uh, question me when I used to um, get about in my official vehicle with the sign. They thought it's a treasury. So we, because when they saw the sign, which is translated in Sinhalese, uh, they thought uh, they never knew what the public trust is. And I experienced this when I, for example, when I drove for official function to the BMICH, which is just a half a mile away from where the public trustee's office is at the moment, uh, the police officer at the gate asked, sir, what's this? Where, do you all, where are you all located? Are you all the treasury? So yeah. I said, oh, we're just down the road. We're just half a kilometer down the road. So that is the level of awareness which is lacking. So if that can be promoted, perhaps through, uh, through publications, perhaps through uh, media, perhaps through uh, a very active and, and progressive uh, website, uh, because we, uh, we live in a world today, uh, this is a commercial reality again, people will not go driving past, they will look up, okay, what are, the, what are the institutions in our country where we can set up a charitable trust? So once, once you are Googling or once you are searching on a search engine, first thing the public trustee of Sri Lanka should come up. So those are probably in a, in a small way, they could make a big difference in, in improving the level of awareness. Once the awareness is there, then people will develop a trust. Uh -huh. uh, a trust doesn't come overnight. People will look at the history to see whether it has got a credible history and then they will make their own judgments. But for starters, we have to raise the awareness level. Like I said earlier, many would have this question as to why you need to create a trust. Uh, why can't rights be given outright? Um, could you give an example of how a charitable trust works? Uh, well, the best example I can give, Alanki, is uh, say for Because I think many, many create trusts for charitable purposes. Correct. It, it, it's purely on the person's personal uh, preference. I might have a property where I might not want to give it outright to an individual or an institution. I might say, look, uh, I might go to the public trustee or in other countries, uh, a perpetual trustee and say, look, uh, whatever the income the trust generates uh, from the revenue, that has to be allocated to paying uh, an annual uh, a scholarship for a particular school or an annual sum or a monthly sum for a particular institution. So that's my personal uh, uh, wish. Uh, so the public trustees, or for that matter, any trustee, and more so we are on the topic of public trustees, uh, obligation, the legal obligation is to make sure that the, the, the revenue or the income which is generated from the trust, the charitable trust, is only used for that particular purpose only. So, uh, one best example I can give you is in a Sri Lankan context is uh, the trust created by Sir D.B. Jayathilaka. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know who Sir D.B. is. Uh, but he went out of his way to, uh, to promote the concept uh, in a personal sense, uh, apart from his official capacity at the time. Uh, he donated his, the most valuable asset in his estate, which is the property where the public trustee's office is functioning from now. And he made particular reference in his last will to say that as long as the concept of public trustee remains in Sri Lanka, that it has to operate from this property. And he also stipulated specific uh, charitable objectives. He's named um, uh, almost a half a dozen institutions saying the public trustee has to make annual 
uh, contributions from the income that is generated from other assets, uh, which were also donated to the public trustee. So that's a classic example that I can give you in a Sri Lankan context. You were uh, in Australia for many years. Um, do you think we have done enough in terms of promoting the image of our country in Australia? No, no, that's, that's a very pertinent question, I guess, Alanki, because uh, this, is a, this is the sad part, I see, because in Australia, if you look, uh, uh, if you look at the numbers, uh, Australia, in particular Melbourne, for example, has the highest population density of Sri Lankans, more than 600,000 Sri Lankans, right? So, uh, as, as a nation, uh, we can do a lot to make our brand image felt in a country like Australia. Uh, I honestly, again, my personal, I don't see that happening at the moment. I haven't seen that happening in the past. It's the way that we uh, market ourselves or we, we market our country. Uh, we have uh, beautiful beaches in our country. Uh, we have, um, uh, compared to the beaches we have here in down south or, or in, the, in the eastern province, uh, Australia has beaches too. Uh, the surface beach in Gold Coast where we live or the Bondi beach. The difference is the way Australians market it. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we don't. Uh, another example I can give you is they have uh, a, a massive tourist attraction, which is the IS Rock uh, in the middle of Australia. Uh, we have something uh, of immense uh, value, which is the Sigri Rock. So when I compare, I don't see the level of uh, relevant, appropriate marketing being done. Um, so I think, I think we could do more there in, in that context to promote the brand Sri Lanka. Uh, I'm not competent to say, talk much about other nations, but at least in Australia. Right. Moving on to the final question, I'd like to know, what was the most challenging task you faced during your tenure as the public trustee of Sri Lanka? Most challenging. Um, I've had a few. Uh, the most challenging was, uh, ah, yes, this takes, I think, the cake. Uh, when I assumed duty, there, were, uh, there was a box full of last wills which are sitting in my mm -hmm. office. Um, and when I inquired from my support staff, I realized that they were last wills which had been sitting there since 1930, unopened. Oh. for a period of 90 years. So to put an exact number, there were 254 last wills, which have been unopened, uh, sitting in a box. So I knew it was going to be a Pandora's box if I opened it, but uh, I had to do the right thing according to my conscience, because that's the public trustee's duty to make sure. For example, you've written a last will 90 years ago, uh, giving it to whomever you want to give. Uh, you lived your life, you you, you, you are, after your demise, your kids and kin probably wouldn't have known you left the last will. They would have gone to court, they would have had testamentary cases, they would have tried to locate your property. But we all know, um, not, not 90 years, if you take one fourth of the time period, properties change geographically. People acquire, people uh, illegally uh, misuse properties. So, to me, that was not justice done by the Department of Public Trustee. I'm not pointing any particular uh, finger to any particular person. It's a lack of systems. So what, what we needed back then and what we still need is an integrated system of information. For example, when a, when a person passes away, uh, uh, it gets notified to the Public Trustee's office. So we, we had to go through that process uh, sorry, go back a step. Although I was a public trustee at the time, I had to go before court to get a court order to, to uh, open those last wills. Uh, uh, practically, how far we could have gone through to resolve the problem, I don't know. Uh, but in terms of doing the right thing at the time, um, to see closure, uh, at least in terms of fulfilling the obligation of the public trustee, that was a big challenging thing. And those were... 254 last wills, which have properties worth billions of rupees. Uh, which uh, I remember there were a couple of last wills which had uh, 300 acres of land to be given to a particular institution. 
200 acres of land to give, be given to uh, 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 school for the blind. Um, and there were people who had left last week saying, this box of jewelry is to this daughter, the other one is to the other daughter. So the, if those last wills are sitting there without being... So were these wishes carried out? No, as I said, they, they were sitting there for 90 odd years. Nobody even knew. Um, yeah. Say, if I had a parent who had left last will, I wouldn't have known it all that time. So that to me is a flaw in the system. Uh, that to me is is something that has to be corrected. Definitely. Uh, that, that, that shouldn't happen, not in Sri Lanka, not in any country for that matter. And were there any other challenges you faced during your tenure? And, uh, no, because the way I saw it, the whole concept of public trustee Alanki is, is based on the premise that uh, the public trustee of the country is the most unbiased, independent, non-political and transparent person. If you have that concept in your head, and if you act according to your conscience, you, you can't succumb to any pressures. Uh, if, you are, uh, if, you are, if you are a, a political person, you're not, a pol you're not the public trustee of the country, you're, a, you're the political trustee of the country. Mm -hmm. But the, the office of the public trustee is considered to be the most independent, most unbiased, transparent, uh, trustworthy person. That's the office. So uh, I always had that in mind. I, uh, looking back, um, the short tenure that I had, um, before I re uh, resigned on personal reasons, that was purely for the reason of relocating my family back to, uh, to another country because of my children's education purposes. Uh, I really enjoyed the tenure that I served as a public trustee. And finally, is there anything you'd like to say to our audience? Uh, I would say, uh, please, uh, use the services that the Public Trust of Sri Lanka is offering. And I think we, we have a, a very good uh, minister in place, a justice minister who is, who is reforming a lot of uh, uh, laws. I'm sure uh, he will look at the uh, amendments required for the Public Trustees Ordinance and the Trust Ordinance. Uh, and, uh, and we have a, a, a good public trustee who is the incumbent public trustee. He's, he's been uh, a legal practitioner for a long time. So I, I, I would request um, Sri Lankans to, to make more use of the services the public trustee of Sri Lanka is, is offering. Thank you very much. I do feel that um, this conversation with Mr. Viratna shed a lot of light on trust law and on the concept of public trust in Sri Lanka, which many are really not too familiar with. Thank you very much for being a part of this conversation and for shedding light on this topic. And uh, we have come to the end of this conversation. I will be back with another episode. Until then, take care and stay safe. And thank you once again. Thank you, Alanka. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs>